Hi, welcome to Therapy Designs. My name is Kelly, and if you're new to this channel, this is all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if you're new to print-on-demand or new to t-shirt designing, go ahead and stick around for some useful videos with helpful tips and tricks. Hi, so in today's video, we're gonna be making this design right here. This is actually a photo of a dog, and we've gone ahead and used some paint effects and we've put it inside of a frame and we've made it pop out of the frame and then we've gone ahead and given it a name, Princess, and I have used the paint effects on the uh, script as well so that it has a, um, a sort of painted look all around. Now you can use this to make custom designs for any, well, any animal or pet for somebody. So if you're interested in selling custom pet designs, this is a great method. And this is my doggy Xander. He was just kind of come say hi. Okay, so if you're interested in learning how to do this, go ahead and stick around, okay? So as always, we're starting with our blank background. It is 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with a black background. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select black for my background color. So for this design, I'm going to be using a photo of a dog that I have selected off of Canva, but you can go ahead and use any photo for this technique and you can make custom dog portraits based on any photo that you have of a dog, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you one made strictly through Canva. So if I come up here to elements, and I've already done a little search, I searched for Chihuahua. And I found this very cute photo right down here of a Chihuahua. So this is the one that I'm gonna be using because I thought it was just adorable. <laughs> so starting with this photo, what I'm gonna do is do some paint effects on it. So I'm gonna click it, I'm gonna edit the image. And the first thing I'm gonna go is down to paint effects, which is right down here. Now there's a lot of different paint effects you can use. My personal favorite is this one right here, but you can play around with all of them and see if any of them are ones that you prefer better for different things, but I'm gonna use this one here. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna open up the controls. I'm gonna do it on a low intensity because I don't want it to be too abstract. Let me give it a minute. There we go, okay. So now you can play with the intensity and make it you know, as, as abstract as you like. If I bring it all the way up, you can see it's, it's very, dark and abstract. If I bring it down, it looks a lot more like the photo. I want it to be somewhere kind of right in the middle. So I do still want it to look like the dog, but I want it to have that nice painted effect. So I'm going to go with this one right here and I'm just going to hit apply. And perfect. So give it one second to finalize. And so this is the image that I'm going to be working with. Now, the first thing I need to do is duplicate this image because I'm going to need two of these. So I can just click on it and put control D and it is gonna duplicate. So now I have two different pictures. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a page here and I'm gonna bring one of these pictures down to the other page so it can just sit here and wait. Now this first one here is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put it inside of a circle frame. Now you can use again, any shape frame that you want. I'm gonna go up to elements and I'm gonna put in frames. It'll pop up right here. Now the circle is easy, but you can scroll through and you can use any type of frame that you want or whatever works best for your particular project. I'm just going to use the circle because it's, it's simple. And keeping the circle right where it's at, if I can close this, I'm now going to take my photo and whoop, that did not, that doesn't want to work. Put it in, there we go. <laughs> Put it inside the circle. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger because I'm going to want it to fill most of the page. Now, the way I do it, the dog's head's going to pop out the top here and there's going to be some wording here. So I don't want it to be too big, but right about there. Now what I'm going to do is enlarge this photo. So what you see inside the circle is what is going to be inside the circle. And then what you see kind of popping out, that is what I'm going to make pop outside of the frame. So if I crop it right about here, you can see that I'm gonna have the dog's top of the dog's head and its ears kind of popping out of frame while the rest of it remains in frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and right here. Now, if I actually, 
little trick if I make it exactly the same width as the um as the uh sorry as the backdrop it's going to be easier for me to line up the images later and I'll show you that but I'm going to go ahead right here I like it like that perfect so now I have my my frame so I'm going to download this first picture that way I can go ahead and put things over it without replacing it in the frame. So I'm just gonna download page one, transparent background, just page one, okay? And we'll download that. So I'm going to bring that download up into my uploads. And now that that's uploading, I can actually remove this entirely. So I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna bring it off. Okay, so now that it has been uploaded, I can take it and just put it right on my project. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop it in, but I am also going to resize it now the size that I like which will be somewhere here. And it was pretty much right in the middle of my, my design. So that is where it's gonna be sitting. Now for this, I also wanna put a little circle border around it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit C on my keyboard. A circle will pop up. I'm gonna go ahead and select a white circle because I'm gonna have a white border around my doggy here. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna take my circle and I'm gonna go ahead and center it in the page so it should be centered theoretically right over the top of my design now what I can do if I want to see through is come up here to transparency and I can make this circle transparent and so now I can see my image underneath and I can make sure that I am lined up exactly where I want to be this is a technique that we're going to be using very soon to line up the dog to create the top image of the dog so if I bring the transparency down, I can see that my circle is perfectly centered and a nice even border. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it back up. And now I'm just gonna take this circle and I am going to send it to the back. So now I have my frame around my dog. So now we're gonna scroll down to this other image that we saved of the dog. And now I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and remove the background. So I just want the dog for this one. So I'm just gonna take this entire image now and I am going to remove the background. Again, it's not always perfect. You may have to manually cut out some things and then you know, make sure the edges are how you like them. But for the most part, it does a pretty good job. So we'll give it a second here. Okay, there we go. So it didn't remove all of the background, that's okay. I can go ahead and use my erase tool and make it as kind of smooth as I want. I'm really only interested in this top portion here because the rest of it is actually gonna be cut off as you'll see in a moment. But go ahead and make sure that the top is cleaned up however you like. So if there's a little extra pink around the ears that maybe you don't want, we can just go ahead and sort of shave this off a little bit like that. Um, same thing over here, a little bit of pink extra around the ears. It's a little hard because I picked a dog that has a lot of you know, extra hair and fur. If you do a short haired dog, it's probably a little bit easier. You're not gonna have quite as many flyaways to deal with. But just clean it up however you want. A little bit of pink is fine because it kind of goes with that um, painted look anyways. I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna cut out a little bit from the bottom of the ear just in case we end up using some of this. Again, most of it doesn't matter. It's gonna be cut off, but just so that you can see, I'm gonna do something like that. Maybe a little bit here. Okay, so I have it more or less the way I want it. Okay, so now here is my saved dog. Background removed. I'm gonna give it a second, make sure it's finalized real good. And then what we're gonna do is take this dog and we're gonna overlay it on top of the dog above. So we're just gonna click it and we are gonna drag. Okay, and so now you can see it is overlaying and I am gonna bring it out. So it's about as wide as the page, which is about the same size I had it when I put it in. So now you can see if I just overlay it like this, 
you can see the top of the dog's head popping out. Now, if I come to the transparency and I bring the transparency down, what I want is for it to look perfectly lined up. Now it's not, I can see a little bit of overlay in different places where it isn't quite lined up the way I want. This is the hard part is getting it the same size and the same overlay. And this is important because we're gonna cut off the bottom half of this image and I want it to have a nice smooth transition. So if I line it up from the bottom and then I just keep resizing until everything looks perfectly lined up. Now that right there looks pretty perfect. I'm not seeing a lot of overlap. I think that this is probably pretty good. So I'm gonna keep it right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the transparency. I can bring it back so as you can see the dog pops forward, but I have a little bit of an overlap here. So what I can do now is just literally crop out the bottom part of this dog and I can crop it wherever I think it looks the best. Um, make sure that the edges are perfectly lined up. So for example, if I was to crop it right here and then pull away, that looks pretty good. I'm not seeing too big of a line. If you don't have it lined up perfectly, you're gonna see a line where you crop. But as long as you have it lined up perfectly, you cannot see a line and now it just looks like the dog is popping right out of the image. So that's the first step. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the dog's name down here. So fake dog, but I've gone ahead and named it princess because it looks like a princess. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna select a text and I'm gonna go ahead and pick a color from the dog that I liked. So I wanna do something light, pink, maybe this color right here. And I'm gonna pick a script font that I like, but I'm gonna go ahead and put princess. And I'm gonna come up to fonts. Now I've recently looked through the scripts and I found one that I like is this Nexa script light. So I'm gonna select this one here. Perfect. So now this is what I wanna use. Now I could just use this how it is, bring it up here, put it there and be done. But I'm gonna show you how you can get that painted effect on the text twos, that way it looks really nice. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna save this as an image. And once I save it as an image, I can do that same paint effect with it. So I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna download this time transparent background, just page two for this one. Okay, so oops. Transparent background, page two, I'm just gonna be saving this princess. So I'll download that and give it a second. Perfect, once I have it the way I like it, I can get rid of this one, I can bring this one, I can drop it right into the picture hopefully. Here, close that. Now I have my image. And so now I can edit it the way I did the photo before. So I can come to paint effects. I'm gonna use exactly the same paint effects I used um, before, I'm gonna go low, we're gonna go kind of with the same intensity. And we'll give it a second. Okay, so now what you're gonna notice here is that it's put a background on here. So even though I didn't have a background initially, I do now. That's okay, we're gonna use the same background removal technique that we used earlier. But if you look at just where it says princess, you'll see it's gotten a little bit of that painted effect to it. Now again, I can Play with it as much as I want. Now don't pay attention to the background. Again, we're gonna remove that. You're just gonna wanna look at your text and make sure that you've got as much or as little of that kind of muddled look as you like. So I kinda like it right here. It's got a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and apply. And I'm gonna give it a second to finalize. Perfect. So now we're gonna take the image, we're gonna remove the background and we will have the font exactly the way we want it. So I'll edit this image. I'm gonna do background removal. And there you go. 
it looks like it might have removed a tiny bit of the eye in princess so if i want to restore that i can hit restore now i'm going to need to zoom in really close so that i can see this yeah so restore i'm going to pick the brush size that i want and boom there is my eye for princess maybe one size bigger brush size was 12. There we go. Okay. Scroll out. And there it is. Princess. I can crop it however I like to make it easier to work with. And now I'm going to take this princess and I'm going to move it right up there. And I can delete this. I don't need it anymore. I can take my princess now and resize it however I like. There we go. Bring it a little bit over. Perfect. And there you have it. That is how you can make a custom dog print. So you can do this on a t-shirt, you can do this on a mug, you can use this on pillows, anything that somebody might want a custom image of their dog on. And again, you can use this with any photo you like. So we have the painted effect and the pop out effect, which is very popular, along with how you can get that painted effect on text. Okay, so now we'll just go ahead and save this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it, Princess. And I will download now transparent background just like we always do and I will have the image all complete. And that's it. That's it for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.